Ask the Podcast Coach for February 6th, 2021. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means, hey, it's Saturday morning. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. Dot com and joining me right over there is the one the only Jim Cullison from the average guy.tv Jim how's it going buddy greetings Dave happy Saturday morning to you a little blizzard warning going on here in Omaha Nebraska so it's good to be inside on ask the podcast coach I'll have to shovel a little bit later today yeah I know I uh I woke up yesterday and I asked the woman in the tube I'm like, what's the temperature outside? And she said nine. And I was like, look, I know there are people in Canada that are laughing at me right now, but I was like, <laughs> I was like, holy cow. Uh, so, but uh, Jim, I see you grabbing the, uh, what yeah, is that? A, is it a pitcher? It's a, uh, it's the pot, it, I guess. The pot. It is the pot. It's a yeah, percolator. Yeah. It's yeah. A percolator. Here we go. Yeah. Awesome. So it is time for the morning pour and uh, the morning pour, of course, brought to you our good friend Mark over at uh, podcastbranding.co. If you need a logo, if you need podcast artwork, if you need a full-fledged website or really anything to just look professional, then I'm here to tell you, number one, Mark is a podcaster. That is such a huge bonus because when you try to explain what your podcast is about to somebody who's not a podcaster, they're like, so it's, it's like a radio show? Like, that's not good. So Mark gets podcasting and he also gets branding like nobody's business. And he'll go over, he'll listen to your show to make sure that your artwork matches your brand. You don't want your, your show to be all up and fun and bright and funny. And then, you know, Mark gives you a big picture of a casket that would not work. No. Uh, so he's going to get you up and going in the right direction. Uh, so check him out. I, I'm I'm just here to say he did the School of Podcasting logo. He did the Ask the Podcast Coach. Uh, I'm sorry, the School of Podcasting artwork, because there is a difference. We've talked about that. There's a difference between a logo and artwork. And he also did Ask the Podcast Coach and the Podcast Rodeo Show. So I'm not just saying this because he's a sponsor. I'm saying this because, well, he does really good work. So uh, Mark, thank you so much. Podcast branding. Co. And uh, Jim, I noticed there as you were holding up your mug. Dog Podcast Network. Dog yeah, Podcast well, if you're, Network. You're a dog lover. Even if you're not a dog lover, pretty good podcast. Listen to on a run, on a walk while you're taking your dog out. They're hiring. Dogpodcastnetwork.com. Uh, lots of great stuff uh, going on over there. And, uh, and of course, they're big. I mean, they're big supporters of our show as well. So thanks, James. Thank you to James for doing all that they do to support us dogpodcastnetwork.com check it out and uh, and download i uh, download their latest they just launched here new they've probably got a couple episodes yeah. in the can at this point the so dog edition yeah something to listen to on the uh, on the road you, listen you don't have to be walking your dog you could be walking your cat you could be in the car so have you ever tried to walk a cat it's not a good idea it's not no, a good idea no, no. Uh, John in the chat room is saying, is Dave waiting for a sponsorship from a national hair franchise before cutting his hair? You know, it's, um, uh, the hair thing is getting a little out of control. I don't know. And I, like I, ac I actually I like bought, um, rubber bands to tie it up. I, and it's not quite long enough to get the ponytail going, but it's close. And I need to, uh, to do that, uh, to our friends in clubhouse. If you have a question, feel free to, uh, raise your hand and we will bring you on stage. To those of you that are watching on YouTube, it's super simple. Just go over to askthepodcastcoach.com slash join, and we will uh, pop you right into the video, and uh, we'll get you up and going. So um, here's a fun one. Uh, this was from a Facebook group, Matt, uh, in the podcaster support group. Uh, I'm a newbie podcaster here. We're on episode 10 with, now we're talking about crappy audio, Jim. You want to guess what microphone he's using? Uh, Yeti. That's right. Uh, with a blue Yeti and audacity. I tried fiddling. It's not a bad with, mic. It's not a it's, bad mic. It's not a bad mic. You just got to know how to use it. And you will hear here, uh, fiddling with the gain, the mic volume and audacity and moving the mic further away. Well, right there, that's uh, no, you want to move the mic closer to you, usually like about three fingers away. However, when I listen to the recording, it's crazy loud and I need to reduce the loudness. It sounds like the mic is getting maxed out and the sound gets scratchy. Uh, any ideas of what to do with the help of the sound quality? My wife talks loud when she's really enthusiastic, and the mic is already almost two feet away from her 
one way record. And I was like, there's so much here to, to comment on Matt. So, um, the first one, you got to pretend you're Oprah. Like you get a microphone, you get a microphone. You no, none of this, like one no microphone sharing. for everyone. No Cause other, yeah, it's going to sound like, you know, you're just recording in a tunnel or a tube or. I, I think back. some people's hesitancy though, to share mics is they're trying, then they've got this illusion that separate track audio is somehow better than a single track audio. And that's just not true. Now, in some cases, it's, you can do more when you have multi-track audio, when you have everybody on their own channel, that gives you some options, which is kind of nice. But if you're all in the same room, it doesn't matter anyways, right? So right. take the, you're going to get some crosstalk. There's going to be some things on there, but man, just get everybody on different, get everybody on different mics and get them close. Yeah. And if you're, if you're like, look, we can't afford another mic, then set it up to record just in the front and the back, put the microphone between right. you and your wife and it's your wife, get close. And, and, uh, you know, uh, talk into that microphone, get a, a pop filter for it. And it's not a bad microphone if you use it properly, but most people, you can set that up to record just from the front. Oh, and that's the other thing. The front of the microphone is the side of it. I cringed. There are two, not one, but two uh, pictures in canva.com of this lovely uh, woman talking into the top of the Blue Yeti. And I was just like, no, we, we, we need this to stop. Uh, I was watching a YouTube video where they got together the cast of Splash, and there was America's father, Tom Hanks, talking into the top of a Yeti. And I'm like, come on, somebody's got to help Tom. That's that's not right. But it's not a bad mic. You just have to know how to use it. And it's not my recommended mic because, A, you, everything you have to buy for it is more expensive. You know, you, you have to get a pretty decent stand to hold it because it's kind of heavy. The you have to get a decent um, yeah that, windscreen. The, the accessories are expensive. Yeah, so. I, I had them all. I had them all. I sold them for to some YouTuber uh, here in Omaha, and we met at a McDonald's, and I sold it. But yeah, that, that those those accessories are expensive. Dave, I think the solution too for a lot of folks is get yourself monitored. Like, and you know that that Yeti has a out has a latency free out on it. Plug that thing in a in a group setting. Plug that thing into a microphone, a powered microphone amplifier, yeah. and give everybody earbuds. When you actually hear how you sound, yeah, you talk a lot different. So you know, people who talk loud on the mic, when when they hear themselves overmodulate, they will they will come down a little bit. When it gets loud in their ears, they will come down a little bit. So that's the best. I I I can't imagine list you know doing a podcast without having real-time audio back in my ears as I sound, you know, cause that USB audio sometime that's coming back, not very good. Like yeah. it's just, it's not, it's not very good. So you want to make sure you get everybody amplified and then don't try and split that thing in a, with just a regular splitter. Cause the volume will go down each time you split it. Make yeah. sure you're going through a head. Those are like 60 bucks. You can buy some cheap ones for 30, get a head, get an amplifier. Yeah. And the other thing there is, I don't think there's a, a peak indicator. I, I just looked on the Yeti I have behind no, me and you don't. No. So you, you want to turn it up and, and you, what you want to look, you said it sounded scratchy. That means it's distorting. You want to look in audacity and you want to make sure that in audacity, uh, click on the little button to say, I think it's like start monitoring and you'll see as you talk that it starts flashing. You want that to be green and yellow, uh, nowhere near the red. Cause when you go into the red, you're just, that's where it's all distorted and things like that. But I would, uh, I'm a big fan of, you know, get get a couple Samson Q2Us and a PodTrack P4, and you are good to go, and your sound will improve uh, a gazillion percent. I just watched a video this morning from, uh, I think it's Travis. Tra yeah, it's either Travis or Trevor, something with a T. Uh, one of the nice fellows over at uh, Buzzsprout, and they were saying, how do you stand out in a podcast? And he was like, number one, audio. Like the whole, you can't just talk into a microphone and just you know, ramble on for 20 minutes, that doesn't work. And you've got to do some editing and it has to sound good because there are people that sound good. And if you don't, that's an easy, okay, well, if you have two shows talking about the same thing, this one sounds good and this one doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's yeah. you're, you're, you're done. So, and then, uh, I thought this was funny. Um, this is from, Hmm. I'm going to say pariah P A R I A H. Uh, I need some, uh, oh, this, this is, I think we've all been here. I need some commiseration and comfort. I just wrapped up an hour and a half interview 
with a busy band. Jim, you know how this is going to end? You want to hey, guess? Do. They <laughs> forgot to hit record? They were close. It, oh, was okay. a, it, it was a good interview. I had my mic uh, routed through a separate channel and recording uh, than the band's. And my mic wasn't recorded. Oh. So that could be worse. She says the cat I'm cat sitting had disconnected a wire while I was shooting her. Uh, while I was shooing her. No, she wasn't shooting the cat, just for the record. As I was shooing her out of my studio. So she ended up with half an interview. So the good news is you well, got the. Not her half, right? Yeah. She got the band's half. So she could yeah. salvage it by with edits, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's basically what people were saying in the. Uh, in the chat room. It's like, I just re-record your part. And then she was worried that it wouldn't have kind of the same inflection as the original. And she said, I could, mm. she said on their track, I guess she could somehow hear a little bit of herself. So she kind of could, could just barely hear what she was saying. So she could remember what to, to say. And I said, well, the other thing you could do is kind of go NPR and make this a narrative style podcast. You've got the answers. Now just weave a story and have them fill in the blanks. That would be another way to uh, to do that. But get, um, you could get a friend to get on the line and pretend to be the other side and have that conversation. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, if you if you got it, you can make some quick transcripts out of it and send it to them. Now, you, they don't need to repeat everything, but it just would help to have somebody on the other side to just have that conversation with. Because when you're talking by yourself, you use a different cadence and different inflection and different all, all those you know the things that you do. But Dave, I would say, hey, I did this interview. I would contact you. Say, Dave, I did this interview with this band. I, I, I need somebody to just record some of the questions too. Can you play the part of the band? <laughs> and and just get together. I mean, hey, it's not perfect, but it's better than doing it by yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Jim, how's uh, how's your new Mac doing? Uh, the Mac is great. Mac came in on Wednesday, so it came early. It's, it's up. Leave it to Apple. They originally said the 12th and then they said the fifth and then they were like, Hey, it's the third. <laughs> like it was literally kept moving the, the time uh, frame wow. kept moving up. Um, it has been a little bit of a chore to get everything converted over, uh, fix the video. You know, I was having some, I was having some jittery issues with my USB bus on the old computer and nothing of course here. Oh, by the way, it's Mac mini. It's the new M one Mac mini 16 gig of Ram. And I think the two, uh, the five twelve uh, gig hard drive. Those are the only things you can configure on that thing. Right. Um, it's been, but, but I had it set up and configured. It came Wednesday. So that would have been Wednesday afternoon. And I podcasted with it on Thursday. Been had been monkey with, uh, video settings a little bit, but I think I've dialed them in, um, uh, connected with Ed Sullivan, who we'll talk about here, uh, mid show. Ed helped me kind of on the sound and how to figure some things out and how to work some stuff. But, the, the biggest problem, Dave, I have is finding the freaking time. Like, it <laughs> moved on me. So whenever I'm doing my intro, I'll say, you know, this is the Average Guy Network, and, and, and I'll say a date, you know, record it on, and I always look over just to confirm the date, and yeah. it's not there because <laughs> it's moved, right? It's in the upper right-hand corner instead of the being in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, it has really helped, I think, in the in, everywhere I'd hoped, the video rendering. Uh, I, I rendered a hundred, no, a hour and 25 minute podcast. So home gadget geeks this week is us talking about that. So if you want all the details, head over to the average a little bit later when I produce that thing today. But, um, the, um, the rendering on that hour and 25 minute podcast, eight minutes, the video rendered in eight minutes. Wow. <laughs> it's 720p, right? But it's eight minutes. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's fast. <laughs> so it was, I did it in iMovie and I, I did it. I tried to mimic all my processes from before. So I tried to take exactly what I did. I checked, I went out to my file directory and said, okay, the, he's, here's the size. Cause I make an MP3, I make an MP4 for YouTube. And then I make a video large and a video small for my RSS feeds. The video large and small were like six minutes and three minutes. Like they were just super fast on processing those uh, right out of iMovie. It did change a little bit. Like I, I had been, and here I'll ask you this question. So I had been creating, I, dro I had dropped it into Audacity and create, you know, cause it's the video file. Use the mm -hmm. FFmpeg to just get the audio. I dropped that full lossless with AIFF, right? That the, the, the Apple right. lossless. And then I'd move it into Auphonic. But, but 
coming out of iMovie, I'm pretty sure that's Fraunhofer on the MP3 encoder. So I just dropped it out of iMovie as an MP3 because that you don't have to, the iMovie will allow you just to drop it as an MP3. Right. Then I moved it over to Audacity from there and Audacity leveled it out for me. Yeah. What I didn't do, and maybe I should test this, is take the, the lossless file, move that into Audacity and then compare the two. I'm sorry, moved it into Auphonic and then compare the two. Yeah. You know, does Auphonic do better with lossless or does it do better? Is it okay I if I put an MP3 in there? I just always, I always keep with, if it's a PC, the WAV file or the lossless on the Apple, I always stay in that format until the final mix down. That's just the way I've always been. You leave it lossless till the final. Till the final one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But well, you, you, you've got a good strategy there. It's like, okay, let's, let's do both and test with our ears and see if it's a difference. I do need to. It sounded fine, to be honest with you. In fact, it sounded better. Come, than it ever has coming out of I, I, I when I play my music you heard that just a second ago well you would have heard it if you were in the pre-show well, well the the music is in there and um it it kind of the my old process kind of crunched the music you could hear the compression yeah. in it I'm not hearing that same compression in it anymore hmm. so yeah. I've got some things to kind of work out but um, it was a little bit of a chore because you have to kind of test all those things you're like okay the video large is this size and I expect this size of a file. How do I get that? Um, I used handbrake. I brought a, there's a mm -hmm. M1 version of handbrake for the, for the new Mac. Um, it's in beta, but it worked pretty well. Like I, I just, it didn't take me any longer to do my, my production time because I saved so much time on the yeah. video rendering. It, I used to just set that on a, I have a core I seven 4770 for all the, hardware nerds out there yeah and that would probably take can you say that again that was just so nerdy what was core, it again? it's a core <laughs> it's a core i7 4770 uh not it's locked it's not the unlocked version just to be of course clear. you're not gonna just go to unlocked that. that's crazy just to be clear it's i not just open. love that it was like it's the uh, it's the core seven five seven seven five six seven seven five so or three seven six eight six seven five seven three, oh, nine. seven five seven five yeah there's like a lot of sevens in there it's like i'm sorry i'm interrupting uh, go ahead no, and it I, took that would have taken that the old process would have probably taken that big of a file. It would have been fifteen or twenty minutes to render. Um, yeah. You know, so it's about half the time. Well, that's what I noticed using Hindenburg, and then you can pull in uh, RX seven effects, which is great until you go to render it, and then you're like, oh wow, adding that D verb to that channel just makes your export crawl because it's processing that you mm -hmm. know audio as it goes through, and you're yeah. like. What's the deal? So, um, yeah, uh, but Daniel says, yeah, you don't want to recompress an already compressed file. And uh, so, if I do, so I have an MP3 that I've, it's uh, that's compressed, right? And right. if I move that to Auphonic, and it does its magic on it, and it did, it leveled it for me. It right. put it in negative sixteen luffs, and the things that I have it do sounded fine. But the ideal situation, right, would be to move the lossless file, the AIFF file. Uh, over, I remember right? that the early days of podcasting and Adam Curry was exporting. He had a show called the daily source code and he exported it at 64 kilobits per second mono sounded phenomenal. I was exporting at the same thing, but I was recording as an MP3. I was editing in an MP3 and then exporting it as MP3. And I sounded like I was just, hey, welcome yeah. to the you know, I was like, what is the deal? And somebody said, oh, wait, you're recording. No, don't record as an MP3. Record as a WAV file, edit as a WAV file, and then export as MP3 as you're, when you're done. When you're ready to go, you're ready to ship it out. And uh, and that's when I was like, oh. And as soon as I did that, my audio got better way quickly. So, Well, the, the difference for me in the lossless is that in the bigger file, that would be a WAV. Some people have a WAV file. It would be the same, same thing. Is that, well, not technically, but you know what I mean. So um, is that the, the speed at which I upload and it's processed at Auphonic. So I am, I'm using the Auphonic web service to do this. I don't have it locally. Um, man, moving that bigger lossless file over is just takes, just takes longer. And it's, it's more on my bandwidth cap, right? So I was kind of thinking, well, I'll test this out. So I think later on, maybe later on today or tomorrow, I'll move the, the lossless file into Audacity and then, or into Auphonic and then, Compare the two. I, this is Dave. This gives me a great opportunity. I'm going to spend a little time with Ed uh, over there at Sonic Cupcake, 
rethinking some of my audio because now I can, you know, it's like, Hey, right. I'm changing. What kind of things can I do differently? What kind of things should I do differently to kind of help, um, help change things? So, um, Michael, one of our awesome supporters is asking, is an old G five Mac any good today? And I have no clue. I'm very rusty on my Mac these days. Some of those, and I don't know what the specs on the G five oftentimes. So, you know, like Mac will stop offering the, the OS upgrades for the older versions of the Mac. And so you're stuck like, and you just, you know, but if it works for you, like if it's working, if you can get the software to work, you know, that's yeah. the key. Does the software work? Yeah. If it doesn't, then, well, it's time to update. I had, um, where is, oh, no, I guess I didn't do that. There was somebody in uh, one of the Facebook groups that was using a bunch of PreSonus stuff and just the hardware didn't work anymore. And they, they were kind of like, what do I upgrade to? And what was really weird is he wanted to stick with PreSonus. And I was like, but that's the company that just made you obsolete. It was like, and I guess that's just yeah. the case. I mean, that's, yeah. it is the, it's technology. You know, when you buy something on its way out the door, you know, we're going to laugh someday when we look back at the pod track P4, we're going to like, what, what? Oh, man, that old thing. Holy cow. Look at this new thing. It's the size of my yeah, thumb and it'll, you know, know, it'll cook your breakfast. It's it like, won't even be a thing, Dave. It'll just like it'll be built into something else or yeah. like, it won't even be a thing to buy. Hey, let me, let me clarify some things in chat room really fast. So okay. uh, I made a comment about a bandwidth cap. No, I, the, the larger lossless file, like a wave file of audio is pretty big. MP3 of course is crunched down. When I upload those to a they, they, they charge me by the minute there, not by the size of the file. So um, I, I, I'm not worried about my cap there. Although I am, I only buy a certain number of minutes there. So, I am, I have bandwidth problems here. And so sending larger audio files to a phonic counts against my internet bandwidth cap. So there we go. A little clarification. And uh, I got to agree with Kyle. I bought the, the desktop version. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles in terms of like, it'll post to here and add a pre and post thing. And like, but if you just wanted to clean up stuff, it's, yeah. it's everybody says that. Cause I use the web and then I'm, they're like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but the web has more features and they update it more often. And so I go, oh, oh, okay. You know, I spend, I think, $11 a month. Yeah, it's not. For, right? For, it's not terribly yeah. expensive. But then you're right. I don't, all I really do is use it to level out and set the LUFs and yeah, make an I, MP3. So, you know, maybe it's worth it. It's what, 80 bucks, 90 bucks, something like that for the. Something like that. Version. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but if you just happen to pop in to ask the podcast coach, we're at uh, askthepodcastcoach.com slash live. Uh, in Clubhouse, if you uh, want to, uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand. And uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, just go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash join. And here's uh, another question I dug out from a, a Facebook group. This is from Matthew. Uh, this was in Podcast Movement. It says, I started doing a podcast editing for hire but I have no clue of what the best place is to find people looking for podcast editing for higher services. And I was like, well, that would be podcasters. Um, so I guess to me, what I would do, and it would be a painful journey is I would go into Apple. I would look for show. Well, I was going to say, look for shows with the anchor logo, but the people that have the anchor logo are probably using anchor cause it's free. So when you go, will you pay me to edit your show? They might go no, cause they're looking to podcast for free, but find somebody with horrible audio, which really isn't that hard to do. And, uh, reach, then I would take a small snippet of their show and I would edit it and fix whatever it is that you think you could fix and send them a before and after and go, Hey, I'm so-and-so here's this. I did a little example of, uh, what I could do for your show. If you're interested, let me know. And, uh, we can talk about pricing. So, but it's just a matter of you, you, it's, it's weird when you're looking for great audio, you can't find any. And when you're looking for bad audio, <laughs> you can't find any, I don't know, Jim, any advice? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. You got to treat it like any small business. You got to get yeah. your, you got to get your, your name out there. You got to take a risk and say, Hey, I was listening to this and here's what I can do for you. And oftentimes people are like, Oh, now they're going to ask you, well, how'd you do that? And you're like, well, that's the magic. Yeah. 
<laughs> I used my X amount of time of experience and, you know, I know what to do. So, uh, yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah. I know a lot of people, you know, they want, they think if I become a podcast consultant, money will just fall from heaven. You still have to treat it like a business. You have to go mm -hmm. out and find people. And, you know, the other thing is, especially if you're, you're working now, getting them to launch is okay. That's, you know, but again, some people are like, oh, I'll just watch YouTube, you know, so it's, it's you still have to knock on a lot of, uh, a lot of doors and, you know, it's, it's, uh. It, it's not the cash cow I think that everybody thinks it is. It's hot, and that's true, and a lot of people want to start. but Yeah, but I a lot of people don't want to separate themselves from their money for you. Like no. they're not, I mean, they're buying, they're buying anchor for God's sake. So it's not you know, like, okay, they've started at the bottom, right? At the, as far as price goes, not quality, but as far as price goes. And so, you know, you're like, Hey, you want to spend some money on me? I mean, you got to convince them to do it. It's, yeah. it's, it's tough work. Uh, coach Dave says, wade through iTunes, uh, or Apple podcast, depending on what device you're on and have a listen. There are lots of podcasters that can use an audio editing boost. They often have websites. Yeah. And that would be the other thing. Uh, I would make a website. If you're going to put your shingle out there, put your shingle out there, Yeah, you know, go over to wherever, you know, Maple Grove partners, go over to coolerwebsites.com, get some hosting, throw up a website. Cause if you want people to trust you, you know, I always say I'm, I'm not buying a car from a guy in a tent. You know what I mean? If like, he's just, you know, popped up, we've got a nice baseball field at the end of my street here. If that guy pops up a tent and has a car outside, I'm like, I want somebody I can go back to that's going to be there if I need help and support and things like that. And if you don't have any of that, it just looks like you're some guy in the basement that's asking yeah. people if I can edit your audio. Dave, I have a TikTok page. Isn't that enough? <laughs> Can't I just have a TikTok page? <laughs> no oh, i'm sorry darn it that is not darn going it, to hoping. work hey uh, if folks in clubhouse wanted to join us what, it, do, what do they need to do what's what's their they, they raise their hand we've got uh 13 people okay. patrick and colin and lisa we're looking and, for questions right that's what we were looking yeah. for from if clubhouse. anybody has a question just, just raise not your hand chit chat but questions and i will bring you up on the stage and uh well, we'll be happy to answer your question. Uh, speaking of, though, BS stuff, um, this is one of those things that, you know how you say there are times when people really obsess over things that they're just like, mm, wow, that's that's kind of a waste of your time. Um, this one I've never heard of. This is from, I believe her name was Laura. Uh, I've been warned off posing questions in the opening sentence of my podcast episode descriptions because certain platforms don't like it and won't promote it. I have never heard this in my life. Have you ever heard of this? No, I haven't. Uh -uh. No. And so she said, you know, has anyone had this happen? And I love this because this, of course, then got into a conversation on keywords. And I know in Libsyn, in our dashboard, it says, hey, here's where you put your keywords. Oh, yes, by the way, Apple completely ignores these. And um, so James Cridlin, who... He's a, a he's definitely a journalist. He's also definitely a giant nerd. Chimed in. He said, "Hey, just so you know, there is no keyword metadata in use in podcasting. None, zero, zilch. Is <laughs> is there algorithms ranking the show, search results on what users type in? Absolutely. Is that anything to do with keywords? Nope. There are none in a podcast RSS feed. We." will agree to disagree on this one. Somebody had said that previously is a fancy way of saying, I do believe you're wrong, but since I understand the technology here, and since this group is literally called the no BS uh, Facebook group, I'm going to call out any discussion of keywords in podcasting as BS because they literally don't exist. So if you're worried about keywords, now that's not to say keywords on your website don't have anything to do, but uh, that was one that uh, I was like, yeah. And I just see people, I see people at Lips and they'll put in like 30, like literally 30 mm -hmm. keywords. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, mm -hmm. wow. I don't know if there's a program that they typed in and it spit out a bunch of keywords or whatever, but. Uh, uh, Otter will do that for you based on your transcripts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That might that's, be, that, that's pretty slick. Might be a good way. We spent a lot of time at Gallup uh, optimizing uh, the posts for the first hundred words. That seems to be titles in the first hundred words seem to be the most important right now. I, I have it on my list of things to investigate is I want to look into like blogs. There's got to be blogs on how to write a really good first paragraph mm -hmm. of a blog. Mm -hmm. Like, cause that's the one that sucks you in. And I was like, what's, what's the strategy to, to use there to write a really good 
first paragraph. Because in Apple, you have the whole, um, uh, you know, you have the Apple, you have a, your description, then you have your Apple summary. And your Apple summary kind of is a, uh, a thing. Uh, Andreas is asking us, how do you join on live? Uh, it's just askthepodcastcoach.com slash join. So, um, and where'd that, where'd that come in at? From, uh, I guess it's on. Oh, YouTube. Andreas? Yeah. No, that's the, yeah, the YouTube channel. Yeah. So, um, and we can actually, if you jump in, we can take care of that. But I do need to say thank you so much. Yeah, hold to, on. Before, before you do that, could you, uh, um, the first half I drank a lot of coffee. Could you? Oh, could you, yeah, we could, we could definitely do that. Help me. <laughs> Pour that <in>. Thank you. <laughs> I'm thirsty. Uh, but we do want to say thank you to our awesome supporters. Uh, first of all, of course, the teacher's pet, you heard about it at the beginning of the show. And I love this picture of this dog. Uh, actually right now, when I blow dry my hair, I kind of look like that. Um, but it's a big old, I guess that's, is that a, it's not a beagle. Is it a beagle? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know my it, dogs. I should. A dog. Yeah. I it's should. a dog with maybe big James ears. can help us out. I'm going to say James would definitely know yeah. James, of course, from the dog podcast network. And one of the things they're doing over there, they're looking for 101 dog stories. So if you are a, a creator, you know, content creator. Oh, and by the way, you have a story about a dog. You can actually uh, enter this contest with a chance to win $5,000. So check that out along with all the great podcasts over there geared towards dog lovers at dogpodcastnetwork.com. And we always thank our awesome $20 supporters. Uh, Felix, over at the Latin Podcast Awards, uh, latinpodcastawards.com. This is an award show for, as you might imagine, uh, Latin-type podcasts. And uh, been around since 2017. It's part of the Audio Dice Network. Uh, check it out, latinpodcastawards.com. Glenn the Geek Hebert over at horseradionetwork.com. If you like horses, you'll love Glenn and horseradionetwork.com. I think he's got 15 or 16 shows all about horsies. Uh, Max Trescott, if you like to get in a plane and fly around, you're going to love Max because he talks about all the avi aviation news talk, and you can find that at aviationnewstalk.com. Uh, Kim over at Toastmasters101.net. Got to give a shout out to Kim. She did a presentation this week on podcasting to a bunch of Toastmasters people and gave me a huge shout out. So check her out over at Toastmasters101.net if you're looking to develop your voice and reduce your editing time and just improve your content in general. Uh, Toastmasters101.net. Uh, Shane at Spybury.com, who was on the School of Podcasting last week, uh, talking about his show Tourpreneur. He actually kind of navigated a, a show about travel during a pandemic when nobody can travel. And uh, I thought it was, I, I enjoyed that interview. Shane's a great guy. Check him out over at spybrary.com. The Indie Drop-In Network at IndieDropIn.com. This is where if you have a show about true crime or comedy, or if it's just spooky stories, uh, go over and see Greg, and he can basically put your episode in rotation. And they do a lot of work to get people uh, to your content, IndieDropIn.com. Uh, we just heard from Michael over at Baby Mountain Radio Productions. If you need help with a, a podcast, he could probably help you out with it as well. Uh, he has, he says, we're pod. Uh, you know what, Michael? I forgot to, he sent me a new slide. I keep forgetting to, to put in his new slide. Uh, it's really cool. But uh, BabyMountainRadio.com, where podcasting and hard work are made fun. We mentioned him earlier. Ed Sullivan, SonicCupcake.com has been helping out Jim. And if you need help with uh, anything sounding good, if you want an editor for your show or whatever, check out Ed over at SonicCupcake.com. And uh, I thought, because we haven't thanked them in a while, they're on my website. Our $10 supporters, if you go over to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome, uh, Frasley over at b-great.today, Dr. Norm at beyondthebedside.net, uh, Jeffrey at podnuts, the repair podcast at p-o-d-n-u-t-z, Jonathan at uh, weeklyawesome.com, Kyle Bondo in the chat room at gagglepod.com. He also does pod Wrecked and a bunch of other ones. Uh, Katie Holmes at out wittrade.com, Martin at uh, christianstt.com, Michael, we just mentioned him, babymountainradio.com. I need to check. I think he's not a 20 out of 10. That'd be crazy. Uh, uh, Nick over at cincinnatisoccertalk.com, and Sean at beyourownnerd.com, and Josh Rivers, better known as podcastguymedia.com. Now, if you'd like to support the show and be on that $10 list, go over to askthepodcastcoach.com slash awesome, or go over to askthepodcastcoach.com slash store. We've got plays that you can donate once or you can do all sorts of, even buy my book. You can join the School of Podcasting. You can uh, 
you know, get in line to donate or donate to a sponsor, uh, Jim's cup, all sorts of fun stuff over at askthepodcastcoach.com slash store and uh, joining us here live on the YouTubes. And I see, of course, it's the second half of the show. People go nuts. So people on Clubhouse that raised your hand will be with you in just a second. Right now, we're bringing on Andreas. How are you, buddy? Hi. Um, nice to uh, see you both, Dave yeah. and, and Jim. You Likewise. hear me properly, right? Yeah, yeah you sound oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, my questions basically are a couple here. Uh, first of all, um, well, my podcast is uh, all about uh, hard rock and heavy metal, so it's all about music-related stuff. Yes, so, okay. Uh, I would like actually to ask you specifically your opinion regarding the, the background music. Uh, we normally use, while well, I do interviews or we do episodes, the background music. So I'm not sure, actually, if in order to have a, a high-quality show, that is something that is going to, like, to make the difference, right? To, to have not copyrighted music in the background while somebody yeah. else is speaking. So first of all, that's the, the first question. And the second one, I really love the, the, the actual transition that you have while you present like a little piece of the audio, like a piece of the interview. Like mm -hmm. it's like, a, um, I'm not sure if it's like go from, from one of the, the AirPods to the other one. So I like actually your, your insight regarding this because I, I really love that. Is going to make something like stand out by the time you're presenting the what you're going to talk about in the in the in the episode yeah. later. Like so a I would tease. like that one. Yeah, exactly. Like like that sound. Where what what's the the idea of this one? Where I can get it because it's useful. I really would like to like know like more more about this, like your idea or where yeah. I can get that kind of sounds, right? Well, it's it's a matter of listening to the interview and then when you hear something because a, a tease the the point of it think think of we're, we're gonna we're not gonna go dirty but if you mm -hmm. think about it when you're when you're with somebody and you're making each other feel good if they start to tease you every bone in your body goes mm, i want more I, and so you want a, an audio tease to do the same thing you want it to be like uh they can say you know i thought i was safe and then i turned around and bink, and then the music comes in you're like wait i what i what, what happened when he turned around? So an audio tease is something that's, or if they go, and without even knowing it, I made $3,000. In comes the music, like, wait, what'd they do that made $3,000? So you, it's gotta be, but if they if it's something like, okay, today on the show, yeah, I was born in Arizona and my mom actually worked for the church. In comes the music, I, I don't care. Like, what? Okay, yeah, it's Arizona and the church, but that doesn't make me want more. It's true and it's real, but I don't know, Jim. Any tips on a on a tease? Um, uh, no. I think you know. I have a guy that does that for me at, at work. He goes through the transcripts and reads them. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, it's it, it's actually kind of I I think it's easier to find those quotes by reading them as yes. opposed to like listening the translation to translation or the yeah the transcription. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so that might be another trick is a uh, uh, to. Uh, get it transcribed. You can use Otter. Or there's a bunch of other services that'll do the automated stuff for you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then let your eyes find those quotes. Then kind of read through and you'll kind of like, see. Like what stands out for you. That's something like is going to be like the catchy part, right? That's right. what you mean. Yeah, right. exactly. No, exactly. Yeah, you can kind of kind of find those sometimes. And, and regarding the, the little um, sound effect, Dave, yeah. that I really love it. This is really something like very what? peculiar. Where it's, did you get it? Which, which, like at the beginning of like you're you're uh, about to present. Okay, uh, I'm talking oh. with uh, Jim, and oh. here's a little piece. It's and cool there's a, a and I hear, uh -huh. and a, exactly. And it's a whoosh. Um, yeah. I I use um, let's see, uh, Audio Jungle. Oh. Dot, dot net is one where you can get a lot of sound sound effects. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure how legal it is, but I know you can go to the library and get CDs mm -hmm. of sound effects. I don't know sure. exactly how legal that is to use, uh, yeah. but Audio Jungle is where I get a lot of my stuff. And you can just just type in "whoosh" or yeah. "transition" and you'll find stuff sure. like that. Um, yeah, you, you'll but, pay for those. Okay. You'll buy and those. This is and pay the, for the them actual. Um, this is not mono, right? This is like the the. Oh, the, it's stereo. The thing yeah, that I, does the yeah stereo stuff, right? Yeah. So you can you can do that in some programs like in, I believe Audacity will let you pan stuff. Um, mm -hmm. 
and I know the one thing I hate Hindenburg doesn't have a pan feature. I know in uh, uh, audition you can turn on a feature in uh, with and volume you, you get a little you line that shows it. you how like you can adjust the volume okay. for that. Well, when you turn on pan, you get another line, and you'll see that when you drag, you'll have this line, and if it's all the way up, it's left, and if it's all the way down, so you can have yeah. a sound that as the sound is going through, all of a sudden it goes and it goes from one headphone to the other and some some sound effects are made that way and then other ones you can use software to uh to pan it but there's no pan in hindenburg journalist that's what yeah. that's one feature well, i wish they would add as far as i know i'm not not sure if jim maybe um has any insight regarding this but as far as i know audacity what allows me is like when you're producing the the music right like an um, album so you're panning uh let's say that that percent right that percent left so it's not like right. i can adjust through the track so it's just like a, a specific um adjustment through all it so i wanted to know that's a great trick it's something that stands out in school of podcasting and of yeah. course it's something that is going to like let people know okay this guy really is um you know going going big or going home at the very end that's what it actually for me is well, and, and i use wishes and sound effects just to kind of trigger the brain that hey we're either moving into a new topic mm -hmm. or here's the interview it's just something that and a lot of times it's what i'm actually doing is copying what was probably a weird in many cases i've uh i've done a, a uh introduction if i'm doing an interview mm -hmm. and i'll be like hey jim i'm gonna interview i'm gonna do an introduction here i'll probably do another one later and i'll be like hey today joining on the show it's uh jim Carlson. he's uh home gadget yeah. geeks you know him from uh the average guy.tv you know jim how's it going uh what, what are you up to buddy and i'm mm -hmm. like oh that was that was weird so i will just cut that out i'll do the interview again mm -hmm. and i'm like here's my talk with jim and then i'll just exactly. have, and i'll have jim, and i'll get because i always say jim welcome to the show that's whoever i'm talking to when i get done with the introduction the next thing i'm going to say is andreas thanks for coming on the show so mm -hmm. then i can you're good to achieve right away right yeah, i can always do the introduction just care about the content straightforward and that's yeah. it and then uh, the uh um uh kyle had a question or a comment as oh. well and i would agree with this uh i'm not a huge fan of music beds because i'm a musician and they distract the crap out of me so if i'm talking to you and i've got this going on in the background and even if it's soft especially mm -hmm. if there's if there's words in it there are times when i'm like like right now my musical brain is like i think he just went to a g to it uh, that's a minor okay that's definitely a d and then a g and then back to the c so um that can be sorry it's just a it's like a, it's a dog reaction it's pavlov over there uh so i you know now on one hand you can use music in some cases if they're telling a story mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're talking about the time their grandma died and you want to mix in some sad music like you put some mood there yeah yeah you can put some mute music in but just uh for me i'm not a huge fan of i don't know jim music in an interview no i don't like it yeah there's appropriate like, times. All, yeah there, there's just appropriate like times okay yeah there's appropriate times for him but yeah in most cases no but you know what andres you you do your thing if you, yeah if and you're not you didn't ask this question we, we mm -hmm. kind of we kind of inserted it no but. It's, it's basically of course you know you're yeah. you're your ceo in your podcast right so it doesn't matter totally but what i yeah. mean is because of the context all your insight all what is actually at least standard for me is mm -hmm. you, know, you know checking out people that is actually more experienced yeah. than me yeah. so of course if mm -hmm. i can act let's get some some uh inside there is it's very yeah. useful yeah. so well, it's for me that and all the previous we're almost like 40 45 episodes now in in the catalog yeah. So um, most What's of them that? have the, the audio. I put it like really, really um, subtle in, in the background yeah. music. So I wanted to know like if this one is something that is going to show up as really professional or it, it sounds like it's Ask more your listeners. amateur. Yeah. Ask yeah, your I, listeners what they I, think. I don't think it's going to make you sound bad. I just think it can be distracting. What Where mm -hmm. I've seen background music really mm -hmm. quiet used is if you have bad recording. And you're trying and oh. you have like some sort of hum or something that you can't get rid of you put a little music okay. over it i mean that's how i fixed i had a really old car and it was awful and it sounded bad okay. so my my the way i fixed my car was to turn up the radio in the car and i didn't <laughs> there you go problem solved okay so, uh, awesome thank uh, you very uh, much both yeah, for, yeah. for Andres, where do we where do we find your podcast uh well uh, 
first of all, you can find us in, in our website. It's basically in Spanish, this show. So uh, it's called Major Roquero, actually. Well, I'm not sure if you can see maybe this. Yeah, there nice. there is. Right. Uh, maybe I can put it in the chat so you don't yeah, have to sure. worry, right? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, there you go. Uh, we're right. going to be in, in the, pla the podcast platforms. Normally, we have a link that is going to be like just like yours um, in, of the School of Podcasting slash platforms. So we yeah. do the same. We have a link. So I'm going to put it there and people can be able to find all the information with on single click. Awesome. Thanks, Andres. Awesome. Thanks for jumping. Thank you for all your insight. Have a you great day. Bye. You Take care. Have a great weekend. All right. And coming to the stage from Clubhouse, again, if you raise your hand over there, we will bring you on. Uh, oh, I I know this guy. It's Raf from uh, Served, the one and only. Uh, this is a guy I spent, we talked till about four in the morning I, I, at Podcast Minute Atlantic. And I was like, you have to start a podcast. Nice. Because he has such a, a, a great passion to just help veterans. He's all about getting, and you would know, you're, you're a, vet, a veteran. You're in the Army, yeah. is, is transitioning from, from vet life yep. to yep. civilian life. Yep, for sure. And uh, that's what Raf's uh, show is all about. Raf, what's going on, buddy? What's up, Dave? How are you? Thank you for having me on stage here on Clubhouse. Yeah, what's uh, what's your question? Well, my question is, I was on Clubhouse uh, perusing around, and I was on uh, another podcasting uh, room, and there was a statement made, and I wanted to get your thought and opinions. Um, well, first of all, thank you for the nice intro. <laughs> Thanks for having me on stage and, and for the nice intro. Um, and... Uh, the statement was, and you ready for this? Yes. Podcasts are dying. <laughs> that we are on, we are at the, the, the climax. We are at a supernova state where the sun of podcasts is, is, is going to uh, uh, self burn itself out. Um, and this was a very bold statement made in a very big room. Right. Uh, Steve from uh, Club Pod uh, Podcast Magazine was the moderator. Uh, and it was sort of like, um, like, dang, that's a, that's a, you know, that's a pretty big uh, prediction and statement. Uh, and I didn't know who the guy was, and I'm not gonna name drop him, but uh, the, the the company apparently is um, it's called Barstool, and I was kind of trying to do oh. some reading on them. And uh, so they um, they have a pretty good. Uh, they have a big following. A big following, but uh, they're they're kind of a powerhouse. It's not just you know some. Yeah. Some dude on the street holding a sign says that the world's coming to an end type deal, right? I mean, this is a, right. a company that has the financial resources to go out and uh, spend money in research uh, and all that other jazz. So um, I sided over with uh, Steve because he kind of said, well, you know, the end of podcasting is not here and podcasts are not dying. And so the, the initial conversation, so let me back up, was, you know, our platforms and social media platforms like Clubhouse, uh, like the new XYZ that's going to come out in the future, um, is that killing the podcast, uh, short form, long form? And then that's how the conversation was, was, was uh, that's what the room was about. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I wanted to ask my favorite guy, Dave Jackson, because as you said, you know, uh, when we met that one morning uh, by passing by the, the bar, going to the room, um ending uh, uh the podcast conference there um i was still on the fence whether i even wanted to do a podcast so i felt that it would just be uh, a great conversation to have here with you since i uh, respect you and uh, uh value your opinion yeah and thanks buddy um yeah. I, I think i can answer that with with not even one word one noise yeah that's just uh here's <laughs> <laughs> it's just where, well, here's what's fun. Rob Walsh has a presentation about how all that marketing BS is, or marketing something is BS. But and he has screenshots going back to I think 2007, predicting oh podcasting is dead, and then in 2009 podcasting is dead, and then this is you know it's just it's it happens over and over and over. They said that the VCR was going to kill movies. You know, cable was gonna kill uh, free TV. You know, it's you know, radio is still around. Uh, I love the comment in the chat room. Kyle says, uh, "Radio predicting the death of podcasting since 2006." Um, he also says, by the way, Raf, uh, Kyle's in the chat room here on YouTube. Says, uh, #Hashtag You've been served. So um, there you go. That's awesome. I I don't think Jim. Any thoughts? Uh, 
Yeah, no, we, we go around about this here. It, it's, you know, it, it goes in cycles and, and things, you know, we actually need, I, if I were to say anything about the podcasting industry, it's consolidating and, and that doesn't make it good, dying. It makes it stronger because it means money can be focused more in areas of, of, uh, to, to make it better. And so I'm Dave, I'm not sure we need more podcasters that we got a pretty big variety of them. We're adding a lot in. I think we just need our current podcasters to be better. And so I, I'd, I'd like to see a consolidation cycle where just the quality continues to go up. You know, we get better tools, we get better processes. I mean, look at we look at we've done in the last five years on ask the podcast coach. So, um, no, it's not dying. It's, yeah. it may be consolidating or it may be slowing down. It's not going to die. So I, I don't, Rabbi, that's, a, listen, those are, that's as, about as big a clickbait as you yeah. can possibly find in that setting there on, on Clubhouse for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I wanted, I wanted to kind of bring it up because if folks are now getting into the art of podcasting and, and having it as a hobby, you know, you don't want to hear this doom and gloom and, you know, it's backed up by this major research firm and all this and all that. And Oh, my gosh, I don't want to get into it. So um, I totally agree with you. I went on there and I actually got a, a, a speaking spot. Uh, I got brought up on stage and I said, look, I, I side with with Steve um, out of a podcast magazine. Just exactly what you guys said. And here, interestingly enough, like minds. Right. So I actually wrote it down here in my notes. They said, or Steve specifically said, as film was to the VCR, so they, there you go, the VCR, yeah. is to Netflix. Music, to records, to radio, there's Kyle, to XM Satellite Radio, to Spotify, right? It's, it's, this, it's this emerging um, of tools that we have to uh, continue the, the trade and the art, because I consider podcasting an art in and itself, um, and tell folks, don't listen to that, because yeah. it's going to prevent you from getting your story out, your message out, having fun and, and meeting awesome people. Well, so that's three, my take. 3,038 people yesterday uh, disagreed with that guy and started a podcast. 3,038 podcasts were launched yesterday. So I, I agree that uh, with Jim, I think there are times what I really would like to see is not 3,038 podcast launch. I'd like to see 3,038 new podcast listeners. I, I really wish I would love to see Google or Amazon or one of these companies that's added podcasting to their platform make a a commercial. That's like I, I did see Audible. Audible has a thing with Kevin Hart and the the one thousand hour guys uh, Malcolm Gladwell, and they were talking about the Audible app, and they did say and podcast, and they showed that you know you could listen there. But I, I wish we could get more more listeners because there's still plenty of people that haven't listened to a podcast yet. So. Well, yep. Dave, the the uh, the metrics were, that were being used were not actually podcast created or podcasts out there. It was the metric that they were using was listening. So uh, well, the, the 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 doom and gloom was sort of that instead of listening to a podcast, people are on Clubhouse listening to this no. instead of listening to it, and and that's where they were getting their numbers yeah. from. But in the end, I agree. Yeah. People are going to do what they want to do. They're, they they will, they have their behaviors. Some folks are going to be on Clubhouse for a little bit and then go the, the on-demand audio capacity of what co podcasts are. You're not going to beat that anyway. So it's just, it's one of those things. Yeah, absolutely. Rav, where do we find your podcast? Oh yeah. So uh, um, right now there's nine episodes. So uh, it's one of these things where I was trying to really find what I was trying to do with served uh, and served as S R V D dot vet v-e-t um nice. so srvd dot nice. v-e-t i have nine episodes out there they've kind of been sitting out there but uh um my whole thing is i wanted to make sure that i was going to uh uh carry out this mission in the most appropriate of ways so um i got the nine episodes they're soaking out there evergreen content so if you know of it know of a military family um and sometimes they just need help uh the program is called the leading to living program um, I'm sorry, yeah, the Leaving to Living uh, program where we, we walk, help our military uh, families, veterans, uh, responders um, out there going from um, what they did in, in, in service uh, to a civilian life. Um, and, we, and we walk that out through that transition process. So it's at served.vet. Um, I think 2021 is going to see a lot of growth for it because I, in 2020, I really uh, figured out what it is that I wanted to do. And it's not 
making a million dollars with the podcast. Um, it's really just to be uh, in service to those that have served. And that was always the mission, but I didn't know how I was going to carry it out. So great things happening here in 2021 for it. And uh, as Kyle said, uh, when you uh, uh, get that sticker campaign, uh, you get two stickers. And then when you give a, the, your, you keep one and then you give one uh, and then you get served. And that's where Kyle was saying that uh, he got served because uh, yeah. I passed him out and I said, you just got served. So that's the fun of it. <laughs> Awesome. I like it. I like Thanks it. For Thanks for joining thank us. Thank you. Thanks for the Thanks time. Yes. Thank right, you, you for bet. having me. Great. You bet. Take care. And I just saw on his uh, profile, uh, congratulations on baby number seven coming. Oh, up. nice. That is, that's beyond. Cause like when you go from two to three, you go from one on one, like, you know, defense to, to zone. When you got seven, I think you just, you go crazy. But uh, John Piper coming to us on YouTube. John, how are you, buddy? Hey guys, uh, good to be back. Um, hey, first question, and I got a, some comments if you'll have me. Um, I was on a couple months ago and uh, we were talking about studio lighting. As you guys both know, it's a cost. I heard you, Jim, talking about upgrading your, your MacBook. Dave, you're always tweaking with microphones and different things, but I've added some more lighting. I know in the past and I've added another camera. I know I've got some work to do, but I want to get your own thoughts on kind of the overall lighting. Um, you know, I mainly do podcasts, but also do some live video stuff. So um, kind of your thoughts. I know that's a little darker, obviously. I that. was going to say that that shot is a little dark, uh, but that one looks decent. John, what, what are you using? What do you currently, what'd you put up for lights? Um, they are some. Uh, your sound is great, by the way. Just just let's be really clear. Your sound is really good. But Yeah, uh, PR40 with a Rodecaster Pro, man. I yeah, love the good. setup. Good. Yeah, you sound good. I uh, love this. What about lights? Here. Uh, lights, I've got some fairly inexpensive box lights. Um, I, I did order, I've got my cameras on this, like, uh, if I had a picture, I had a, uh, I've got like a plumber's pipe going across the wall with some mounts. And um, I almost ordered as like a $300 light. I think will probably solve the problem, but I held off because I ordered like $300 worth of brackets. But uh, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I do. I these do. Are, I've got three do. box lights mounted up in the, sky are but they I, are they led no they're they're fluorescent right yeah and so you need a little you, you need to work on the tuning of those lights a little bit so they're they're just that they're in that in that uh temperature zone right we we could we measure lights by their temperature that's not how hot or cold they are it's the where they are on the spectrum of light fluorescence put out really white hot light in in you and that doesn't look good on us Right. And so you need to warm them up with something. So uh, a light that's a little farther down in the spectrum, as far as getting some of that color in, and then you probably need to diffuse them a little bit. So they may yeah. be like right there. That's so, that is so white yeah. <laughs> right? uh, that, that you have right there. And then your other side is too dark. So yeah. you, you need to work on your placement a little bit, work on diffusing them some, see if you can get some, you can get some led tuned lights, lights that you can kind of mess with the tuning on them and see if you can uh, get some in there to add, get them in front of you, get them diffused and then mess with the temperature settings to get a warmer kind of, you know, feel in there. That That's all. So something in between this and then your other view, which is just where you're really, really bright. Dave, yeah. what, what else would you add to that? Yeah. I, I will put a link in the chat room here too. I just bought a pair of, Dazne, D-A-Z-Z-N-E. I was looking for the Elgato Streamlight, and what Jim is talking about, like I can, I can make myself darker and brighter, but I can also uh, make these. Uh, I can make them very white, uh, like I'm turning almost blue now, or I can actually make them like right now. I look like I'm embarrassed because this is really, really uh, kind of yellowish. So, which is great because I have no skin tone. I'm basically a Smurf. Um, so, so I can kind of go in here and, and boost that up a bit and they work with a little remote. So I'm doing this all. Is that wireless remote. on your network Wi-Fi? No, or it's, uh, it's no, wireless it's with a remote. Yeah. It's, so. yeah. But it's the thing its, I it's love, its own, it's its own remote. It's not on the yeah, Wi-Fi. It's yeah, like a Bluetooth. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah own like, like it. Yeah. 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 Cause I had to, uh, I had to change a different channel because I would wake up in the middle of the night and like one would just come on out of nowhere, which tends to kind of freak you out when you live alone and all of a sudden the lights come on and you didn't do it. Yeah. Um, I've got the, the other thing I like about bright. these is I was gonna it, say, I've got some lights behind me just to give a little yeah. buffer light and they're like inexpensive. They work on yeah. my network, but they're just some buffer light back there. 
Yeah, I I cannot win. It's I I'm using a C920 and I always look a little green. I think I need to double check and make sure I'm plugged directly into the computer. I know one week I did that and everybody said I looked a, a heck of a lot better. I might be going back through a hub, but uh, John, I do. I I have check, lighting in the background like you do. So yeah, I'm, I'm check your settings of, too, John. Um, you know, in the camera, there could be some white balance. There could yeah. be some temperature settings. Yeah. You might have got is a Sony a 6,000 that right. this look and, and then the Canon, I've got a Canon camcorder that lets a lot more light in, but I need to tweak. Yeah. Them. That's your temper. That's just sensor, by the way, it's the difference probably in sensors, not in light. Cause that room is probably lit exactly the same. The yeah. sensors are perceiving that light differently. And so you, you might want to, check your camera controls too before you you buy but definitely yeah. to dave's point get some tunable and we're, we're coming up on, on a hard stop here but yeah definitely work on some tunable pieces okay. so J john thanks for thanks yeah, for, jumping guys, thanks in for having me hey john Have before you go where do we find your podcast uh yeah you can search behind the dish uh you know google podcast apple um spotify oh, sorry <laughs> that is the wrong answer where's your website what's your website, your website? i'm sorry no. You know, I, I'm, I've been doing this four years, and it's really just on Facebook. I haven't created a... a oh, I come on. No. Uh, sorry. John, I love you, <laughs> but... Hey, I used to like you guys, too. I used to like you guys. So what you're telling me is I need to go ahead and, and get off my ass. I, I'm yes. hoping I can say that on the air. Get off yeah. my ass and... and and uh, you know, website, right? <laughs> yeah, get, get your yeah. website going today. What's, what's, what's David, your no podcast going? Haircut, man. I, your hair looks good, man. I, I was getting earlier with the comment about the hair. Uh, 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 Dishmedia.com. Perfect. There you go. That's what there we're looking we for. All right. All right. All right. Uh, did, learn. did you did you have more questions? If not, you can stick around for the post show. Yeah, quick. Uh, yeah. No, okay. Well, show. so hang yeah, tight and we'll do it in the post show. Yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, wow, that time goes by so quick. And uh, thanks to the chat room, we have 32 people online. And we had at 1.13 on Clubhouse, so that's amazing. We deeply appreciate everybody coming out to askthepodcastcoach.com slash live and as well as in Clubhouse. Uh, Jim, where can people find you? Yeah, I'm over at theaverageguy.tv and, and long conversation about the Mac this week. So if you want to hear about that and adding a Mac to a PC environment, TheAverageGuy.tv. I'll be posting it later hey, today. Jim. All right, John. We'll talk about that more in the post show. <laughs> and then this week on the School of Podcasting, uh, we're going to be talking about your very first episode. Uh, I came up with a fun analogy that I'm going to play with that because I've, I've heard a couple, and I don't know if people are just finding old episodes of me because they're, they're using episodes like my advice from like 2006. And I'm going to explain why that's really not good yeah. advice anymore. That's the hard and, part uh, about leaving audio out there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I also found uh, some new toys, some new tools. We might talk about some of those. I know Jim's been playing with uh, Raindrop.io. We might mm -hmm. talk about that a little later. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found a, a cool calendar tool that's got a one got a lifetime uh, charge right now at uh, AppSumo for 13 bucks. So if you want to get out of your Calendly or Acuity or whoever you're using to schedule once, uh, it looks interesting. So we'll be, I'm actually going to buy that after the show and play with it because I don't want to talk about something I don't know what I'm talking about. So that'll be coming up on the School of Podcasting. Uh, ask the Podcast Coach again every week here, askthepodcastcoach.com slash live. Thanks to Mark over at podcastbranding.co. Thanks to the awesome supporters. Thanks to the Podcast Network and everybody uh, on Clubhouse and here on YouTube. Stick around for some post show. Uh. And we're back. So <laughs> hey, can you support me with a poor oh, I'm sorry, yes, we can. Yeah. Uh. Jim is very thirsty today. Not thirsty. This How much caffeine are you going to consume? Oh, oh, John, it's all day. Uh, it's just, <laughs> I, it's just all day. I've got. Have y'all ever had a Nespresso, a Nespresso yeah. machine? I've got That's a Nespresso nice. machine. I thought it would save yeah. me money no. from going to Starbucks, but they're like a no. dollar a pod, and I've they already got four of them this morning. So yeah. So yeah. you just, you just did your Starbucks thing. Well, it's only right? like six ounces. You know, the only brew, even a, I drink coffee, yeah. not the espresso, but it's like yeah. six or seven ounces. But delicious though. Yeah, I think right. I bought a hundred dollars worth is like 80 cents a pot or so. John, what, what other questions did you have for us? Yeah. Um, a couple things, um, regarding 
live events, virtual events. Uh, I know, you know, podcast movement went virtual this past year. What are your all's thoughts on hybrid events, virtual events? Are they coming back anytime soon? Well, PodFest is scheduled for June, I think, and podcast movement scheduled for August. And I think we're all in a, well, we'll have to wait and see kind of thing. Yeah. I'm supposed uh, to go to a trucking conference and speak uh, in, in late April in Las Vegas. And, you know, right now it's scheduled to be on, but, you know, if, if we get another out, you know, continued outbreaks and stuff, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I think they fall. want me to record it for, as a backup, you know, so in case you have to go virtual. Fall, fall probably at the earliest, I think for, you know, till we're back to normal, it's 2022. That shouldn't stop us. Like there's some great, you know, I, 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 we have a conference at Gallup where I work coming up in June and I, I got a sneak peek of the platform that we're using this year. And I was like, this is kind of cool. Like, okay. We're, we're, I, the, 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 the way we do things have gotten better virtually, right? The platforms have gotten better. The way we think about them has gotten better. The interactions gotten better with them. We've moved um, our year-end awards is completely virtual this year, which, yeah. you know, last year, this was the last event we did as a company before everybody went home. And so, you know, we, we were in person. We're all kind of thinking like, man, we haven't seen each other in person in a year yeah. now because it was a year ago. Well, they sent out, so this year they sent out physical recognition cards for us to fill out and then mail uh, to people, you know, around the world to kind of so we'll do it online with it, but then do some physical uh, recognition that way. Um, the way we can do things virtually has gotten better. So, John, I wouldn't say I wouldn't be hesitant to attend a conference right now. I guess it depends who it is, but um, uh, virtually because I, th I think they've gotten so much better. But I just don't I wouldn't anticipate in-person conferences till next year for the most part. Yeah, uh, yeah. by doing some live streaming and, and, and all this type of stuff that we all do. Um, I got asked to host a uh, uh, business meeting that was supposed to be here in Dallas. I live in the Dallas, Texas area, and it was attended by about two. It peaked at like 250 different attendees, and I hosted it from here virtually. I had definitely a lot of help, but we had some pre-recorded content. We had some live stuff, and it went really well. And to be safe, we did it on Zoom webinar. You know, there's some cooler yep. things out there. Yeah. But everybody knew the platform, but there's some new platforms that are, to your point, Jim, that are coming out that that really engage networking, yeah. you know, and all this other pretty creative stuff. Yeah, you can do some You can do some good stuff with it. So, yeah. What else, hey, one, last, one last question on lighting, and then I'll, I'll hop off unless you guys want to chat some more. Um, and I'm more than happy to support your all show with any affiliate links and stuff like that. But, um, you know, uh, I ordered some of these camera brackets and stuff through, uh, uh, Kelly, I keep watching it. B and H. Yeah. Yeah. B and H. And, and their, their guy had a, a light suggestion that it sounded like I could put one light up there with this diffuser and it might, so, and I could change it all and it might solve the whole problem versus having three fluorescent lights up there box lights. Uh, what are your thoughts on one, you know, pretty powerful $300 light that I could make warm and all that, you know, the light would be about, um, about six feet from me, I guess. Uh, what are you your thoughts? You, you know how many looms it is? Uh, man, it was, it was pretty slick. I, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I can't remember. You can, you could try it and return it. Yeah, you know, that's it. You, you just don't know until it's hard Lighting uh, is just a hard thing to get right because everybody's room is different. Yeah. And so, you know, get it, try it, and test it and get some feedback. You know, you can always call yeah, in. And, and maybe get a combination of that with yes. two of these, maybe. Yeah, could you know, be. Like that, so. could, be yeah. could be. I use fluorescent at work, but I also have a tunable light that I can I can kind of get the white out, so to speak. And And so sometimes it's just a combination of the two. Um, uh, Hey, you, you mentioned Hindenburg earlier, Dave, and I'm, I, you know, I'm one of those guys. I remember you had a show a while back, maybe it was the first year where you said, man, I got to cleanse my, all the 19 and 20 and $29 and $8 subscriptions I have. Yeah. And I've been guilty of that. I've been paying like Adobe creative for a long time and I don't really use it cause it's for me, it's too complex. Right. And, um, but I bought Hindenburg cause I, you know, the simplicity and I'm getting ready to do a little, uh, 
I did like a 39 minute podcast for behind the dish recently, uh, head coach of, uh, Oklahoma baseball, skip Johnson, but I want to, I'm going to edit out like a two minute for an audiogram thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm going to hop into Hindenburg now. Uh, any parting shots, any, any tips on, uh, cutting audio out of Hindenburg for clips? Oh, it's a piece of cake. Uh, let me pull up Hindenburg here real quick. And you guys are awesome. I, hey, I really appreciate what you guys do. I really do. I think I've shared before, Dave, I, I, before I started my first podcast, I uh, tuned into uh, your podcast on how to start a podcast. So you, I'm like, uh, I hate to use this word, but I'm like one of your, your grandchildren out here. You know? <laughs> uh, here not, is, thanks for those nice words, John. Here is a, an episode of a, a show I've been playing with. And so let's say, and you can go in here and I could say, oh, here's where the clip starts. And I'm a keyboard shortcut guy, so I just go yeah. control B, which is split, and I go and the clip ends over here. So I'll click there and go control B. Uh crap. Control B, there we go. So now I got my clip. And I can just right click and go export selection. Um it's ju- it's now, just that easy. It, do you export it to another track down there and then copy no, it? No, I'm I'm here's my clip. I just go export selection. And it says, oh, what do you want? You export and it I, directly to a ex- or yep. way, right? Yep. Yeah. You can do the same thing on in Audacity. Yep. Do you use Audacity, Jim? I do. I do. Yeah. And Hindenburg, I, I I did the trial version a while back because I'm I'm fortunate. Um, a, a friend of mine through church uh, is a professional audio engineer. He does audio at a very large church, and he and I connected, and he was willing to help, and he helped me get started in all this by professionally editing my audio, but. As you all know, sometimes, man, I don't want to ask him to do a two-minute clip, or I want to be able to maybe uh, edit my own stuff. So if he's busy with, a say, a Christmas, the month of December, if you work in a church, you're busy, right? Yeah. So um, I want to get more familiar with, and I think Hindenburg's probably going to be a good tool for me. Well, you know, there's a, there's this place called the School of Podcasting that actually has a course on Hindenburg. So just just you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> sign up for that, Dave. I will. <laughs> Man, I like supporting you guys. I heard uh, it's pretty good. So, hey, any affiliate links on the lighting stuff? Or are y'all affiliated with B and H or anything? Uh, Sweetwater, yeah. Dave, for you. Ask yeah, the Sweetwater. Coach. Yeah, you can go to. Or I'll shoot you a note through message. Yeah, shoot me a note, and I'll I'll send you a link. Um, but the other thing, just since well, we're talking on. for those listening, ask the podcast coach dot com slash Sweetwater. Oh yeah, yeah, Sweetwater. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, Good no, job, Jim. Nice and, job. There. And and <laughs> I think uh, ask the podcast coach dot com. Do I have slash B N H? If not, I will shortly after that. Nope, I don't have that set up, but uh, um, I will shortly. So, but one of the other really cool things I love about Hindenburg and Jim, you can tell me if this. I'm sure it can be done in other programs as well. But let's say I've got this thing going on. And I decide that whatever this is, I'm going to lose it. So I'm like, okay, well, I can delete it. But now I've got this like six second space that I'm like, ah, if you, if you hold down the control and the alt key, uh, or if I, yeah, it selects everything to the right, wherever you click and I can just drag everything over. I love that feature. So I don't know if that's, I'm sure it is an audacity. I don't know how to do it. I've never hey, done one that. Thing I saw, and you mentioned control B on both ends, but yeah. I saw like, a, I think a, a shift I for in shift O for out or something. What, what's the, you did B on both of your, your uh, edits, right? Yeah. That, that was just a split. Uh, I'd have to see, let me pull that back up. But when you do control, you did control B for both your little clip edit. Control, yeah. And I could also right click and just choose split. Uh, and that's how, let me show my screen here. So you again. just place your marker where you want to start and hit control yep. B. Yeah. So here, wherever it is, I, I can, I could right, see where that little white line is. Yeah. I could right click on that and you'll see where it says split. And that's also where I figured out that the keyboard shortcut is control B. Uh, and there's, you know, all sorts of fun stuff. You so can you can put your marker, your white line where you want it to start, hit control B, then yep. move your marker to the end, hit and, control B and you're yep. done. Yep. Man, that's stronger than a new rope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's covered in the course, right? As well, Dave. Yeah, and, there's there's yeah, all there sorts of fun things. In fact, <laughs> um, I keep learning new stuff. You know, yeah, that's and cool. I just start. I just well, start I'm gonna hop in there. I'm gonna use it. I think I'm gonna. Uh, man, I've wasted so much. Hey, for you listeners out there, 
um, do uh, an analysis of all your subscriptions, man. I've been paying like two dollars a month for the complete Adobe Creative, and I yeah. don't do any video editing in it or anything. It's like I keep saying I'm going to use it, I'm going to use it, or I have somebody that's going to log in and use it. And anyhow, keep it simple, right? And um, man, appreciate all you guys do. Uh, I'm going to hop off and start hey, editing in Hindenburg. All right, John. Have a great Saturday. Hey, hey, who do you like in the Super Bowl tomorrow? Chiefs. Chief? I'll Maybe. put it this way. No question. The, the, the minute Tom Brady throws an interception, I'm all Chiefs. If he doesn't throw one, it's yeah. hard. Yeah. That because I'm like, I'm with I'm with Jim. I'm like Chiefs all the way. They're just too good. But then I'm like, oh yeah, but they are going against Tom Brady. I know, I know. Um, so that's what I'm rooting rooting for. I'm not saying they're going to win. I'm rooting for the chiefs. I'm an Omaha guy. You have to root for the chiefs. Hey, it was kind of cool with the sport. I do a lot of other sports stuff. I won't bog you down with that. But, um, uh, early this morning I connected with a, uh, CBS sports engineer. Cause you know, we're all techie and I had him on one of my football shows. It was a live stream, him on audio only through the roadcaster, but, uh, there's 137 cameras uh, at, Raymond James Stadium. They're doing a, a run through today. Of course, the weekend's a performer. Yeah, right. I tried to get him to tell me because there's a, what's called a prop bet, you know, where you can bet on the coin toss and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a prop bet on will the weekend change wardrobe during halftime. I was trying to get him to tell me so I could hedge on that bet, but he wouldn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. All right, John. Thanks, thanks, so much. thanks for dialing in, man. Appreciate it. Jim, I want to hear about raindrop.io. I know you yeah. mentioned that early in the week. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of discovered as the Mac came in, now I, I have I have really like three different environments that I have to be responsible for. So I've got, I'm logging into a Mac. I've got my Windows login, which goes to my live account. And then I have a work login. And those, then I have a bunch of different browsers. Like I have, you know, I'm using Chrome in some places. I'm using Brave in other places. I'm using Edge in some places. Now I have Safari. So I was thinking, uh, okay, then I've got, all these bookmarks that I use for work. And so I was like, how do I sync these bookmarks across all these different browsers? Because in some places I want to use Edge. I'm trying to get away from Chrome. Um, and some sometimes I need to use Safari. Uh, sometimes I need it on my iPhone. Sometimes I need it on my Android tablet. Sometimes I need it on the Mac. And sometimes I need it on the PC. So I did a little bit of research and I came across this raindrop.io. Uh, it's a, a plugin extension for all the browsers that you can uh, service. They have a free plan if, if you head out there, raindrop.io. And um, uh, it allowed me to import uh, kind of one set of bookmarks from one of the one of the browsers. And then is as because it's installed as an extension, any browser I log into enable that extension, I can go there and click it mm. and get a drop down just like I would uh, in the browser. And actually, now that I've done that, I can take the browser bar out and get more real estate. Not a lot, but get a little more. I get a little more real estate back. Um, in the browser. Been a really good um, extension so far. I've been using it since like Wednesday so or Tuesday. So don't get me wrong. It's not a long time. But so far, um, it's actually helped me to clean up my, man, my browser, my bookmarks were hor horrendous. <laughs> I had like 150 of them, no folders all over the place. And when I put them in Raindrop, they kind of uh, it kind of allowed me to think through. Okay, how do I want to group up? How do I want to move these around? Where do I want access to them? You can kind of custom set where they are. From a Dave, from a podcast production standpoint, it just really kind of helped me gather. Okay, when I go to open Alphonic or when I go to open Mediafire, well, I can set those all to open at the same time. And I could have done that in my in my right. toolbar in my browser bar as well. But it just got me thinking about podcast production and how I did that. I, I need a lot of bookmarks for the support that I do for, for work. And so it was kind of two for one. So I got a chance to clean up some things and then realize that I could sync all of them across all the browsers in all the systems. I wasn't now dependent on, oh, because like Chrome will sync to Chrome and Edge will sync to Edge and vice, you know, all those will sync right. on their own. But how do I get them across all the browsers? And That's so that cool. worked out. Yeah, it worked out really, really cool. And they have a good little extension that works in any of the browsers. And um, and so I haven't, I have yet to do it in Safari. So I've got a little bit of work to do there. But Chrome, Edge, and Brave, for sure, just, just enable the extension. So pretty cool. Nice. And uh, Jim, what is your email address if I wanted to email you? Jim at theaverageguy.tv. Okay, because I'm going to show my new fun tool. It's like the fun tool segment here. It's it has yeah, the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's called, and I, I'm not making this up. This is the name of the software. 
Uh, less annoying CRM. Uh, if you go to supportthisshow.com slash less annoying. But here's what's cool about it. Let me share my screen. Um, and I'm loving it. Uh, so I, it was Jim at the average guy.tv. Yeah. Jim at the average guy.tv. Okay. Average guy.tv. Okay. So there's that. And I can come in here and create your contact and there it is. And I can come in here and put your background and all sorts of other fun stuff. Um, but I didn't want to do that. Oh, the pressure. Uh, here he goes. So what's cool about this is I can, you know, enter your history, anything like that. It's a CRM, but I'm going to go into Google now, or I'm going to go into to Gmail. So this is off the screen and I'm going to email Jim at, in fact, actually you're right there, but I'm also this, this particular app has a special email that if I send to it, will attach it to, and I just, I made a contact in my Google, in my Google contacts called less annoying. And I'll just go, uh, I'll, I'll just type a quick email here. Thanks for the show today. Uh, rain drop sounds cool. Okay. So I send that on its way and I can, so I can come in here. If I look at my workspace today, you can see we're in the middle of ask the podcast coach. I have SOP office hours, uh, in 30 minutes when that's done, you can see I'm a little behind on following up with some people, uh, and blah, blah, blah. But in theory, I'm not sure if I click on, yeah, there we go. Now it does a refresh. If I go back in to Jim Cullison, not yet, but eventually that email that I sent you will show up here in the, in your contact. Mm. And that's mm -hmm. the only thing I don't know is how to do a refresh. Eh, I wish, but anyway, um, company name. But what's cool now, if I were to do this, if I click on your name here and send you an email, which launches Gmail on this, because I've told it that Gmail, you can see where there's the, the weird email that's blind carbon copy. So if I go, this is test two, testing, and I send that from here, that will automatically, in theory, if I go back here, um, if I refresh your account, I think, don't make me look like an idiot software. I just sent that, it should be, okay, maybe there's a, a, a an update thing, but it will eventually put everything, yeah, here's, uh, here's the email. So thanks for the show today. So why that's not showing up in your account, I must have typed. There must be. I, I'm I'm smelling a typo in here somewhere, but in theory, it says it's. I did get an email from you that said. Oh, there it is. I just it just like I said, it takes a second, so I can now see this full email that I sent to you. So what I love about it is I could also say, all right, Jim is part of. He's an editing client, and you can make up your own stuff, and I want to follow up with Jim next week. Uh, about the show. So I'll just say, ask Jim about show, you know, and blah, blah, blah. So you can do all sorts, if I want to schedule a meeting with him, it's all sorts of fun stuff. And it's, what, here's the, the name of this thing, Dave? Less Annoying CRM. That okay. is, uh, but what I love about it is for me, and this is where it's for me, I don't need a pipeline. Any kind of customer relation, it's all about sales and pipelines. Mm -hmm. I just wanted something where I could have all my customers' information, and write notes about them so that when I have somebody and they're like, Hey, like, how's your show going? I can say, Oh, I can see that Jim does the, you know, home gadget geek show. And the last time we talked, he was talking about maybe trying to invent a robo lawnmower, you know, or whatever. And this fun stuff like that. So it's it for me, it's exactly what I was looking for. I've, I tried Evernote. I've tried Nimble. I've tried HubSpot. I've, this is what I, and it's, oh, that's the other thing I love about it. It's 15 bucks a month and I can have as many people as I want. Some of these that I found that I liked, it was like, oh yeah, it's only five bucks a month. But if you have more than 10 customers, it goes up to 20. And if you have more than 15, it's 50. And you're like, wait, what? This is like 15. It's made for small businesses, entrepreneurs. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's my new toy that I found. That it I is like, helpful. I'm, I'm finding more and more people are trying to get into CRM to find a CRM system that'll work for them. And it's too bad that some of our email clients don't kind of have that built in, you know, that built in functionality. Now, 
it's yeah. probably not the right place to have it. But did you? I sent you an email back. So did it show back up under me? It sh- in the in the CRM. Should let me because it that should track up. our entire conversation, right? Right. And yeah. if not, I can go into uh, less annoying CRM. I like yeah. <laughs> not not annoying, but less. It's just a little less annoying. I like that. <laughs> yeah. If if it. I don't see it right now. I just see okay. this is a test two and I see testing. But what's cool is if I go into my Gmail, I can forward that to my that weird email and it will put it in your record. Hmm. So if I'm like, oh, cool, you replied, I just forward it to that. I do the same thing. I have a um, the thing I use to track my expenses is called and.co. I think I've talked about that before. And they have a an email um, that you send it to and it goes to this thing called the shoe box. And so if I get an e- if I get a receipt from GoDaddy for a domain, I'm like, Oh, forward this. And I just made the contact name shoe, first name, shoe, last name box. And I go forward this to shoe box. And then it sends the receipt over. I go into Anco, pull up my shoe box and go, yep, that's an expense for, mm. you know, the school of podcasting. It's pretty slick. Nice. So it's fun, nice. but nice. Yeah. Uh, I was very happy. I've, I've looked for many. I used to use Nimble, and Nimble was a, a great tool. And then they just kept adding more and more features that weren't available because I was grandfathered in at like twelve bucks, uh, and now they're up to like twenty five a month or something like that. And they just kind of like made it to where I really needed to upgrade or leave, and I mm-hmm. chose to to leave. Kind of pros- priced you out. Kind of, yeah. yeah. It was like, hey, we really appreciate that you've been a customer this long, but uh, get out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, pay pay more. Let's just be really clear. They said pay more. Pay get more. Out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get out. And I. And Bring again, all their features were like pipeline stuff, marking somebody as Bring Bring a out. cold lead, a hot lead, and, blah, and right. I was like, I'm just not. I'm just. That's just not my thing. No, that's not your. You're in support. You're in. Yeah. You know. You don't. You don't. Although you could. I mean, you could manage pipeline. You know, but you don't. I did. You, you can actually make your own. And what I did was made my pipeline all your podcast information so I can see, um, you know, what, where are you at? Like, do you have your equipment yet? So instead of like hot lead, cold lead, almost good, it's like, okay, do they have an idea? Great. Do they have their equipment? Yep. Have they recorded something yet? So as my uh, members of the school of podcasting go through that, I can do that. Oh, speaking of that, um, I found out something very, for me, disturbing. And that is I've been using Thinkific for about five years and I've always had like, oh, maybe I should have used Teachable uh, because I was on WordPress and I used Digital Access Pass. That was great. And then I moved to something that had a cool feature that integrated with the Facebook group. And then Facebook turned off the ability to integrate with them. So I moved to something that had a built-in affiliate program that really just blew chunks. And then I moved to Thinkific and I've loved it and it was cheap. Uh, and then they raised the price and then they raised the price some more. And, and now they have it to where if you have more than a hundred students, they raise the price per student. Well, I started that free, uh, learn pod page thing. Well, it doesn't matter that they're not paying. They're counted as active students. So I might be moving to Thinkific. I watched a bunch of videos last night on think or not Thinkific. I might be moving to from Thinkific to teachable but I'm, I'm looking into that. And I know a lot of people like go back to WordPress. They're cool stuff. I, I just, mm, I love WordPress and I hate WordPress and I'm just like, eh. so the cur- the curse of too many, too many cooks in the kitchen on, yeah. on WordPress. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, I yeah. did watch a lot of cool stuff on teachable last night. That was like, huh, that would be interesting. It just, the only thing that would be weird is now the one thing that Thinkific does is you can have courses. So I have my Hindenburg course. I have my, you know, publishing your podcast course, and then I can sell them in a bundle. And I think I would kind of lose that ability. I have a, I'm going to have a meeting with them on Monday to go, Hey, like what what can I, can I not do? But that was, uh, that was good. So um, Mm -hmm. yeah, Raf says here in the chat room, uh, watching the show via YouTube and listening via clubhouse. Yeah. There's about a 10 second delay Put the YouTube on mute. If someone piques my interest, I'll go back to the video. Yeah, it's I, and I've heard we sound better on YouTube than we do on uh, Clubhouse. Well, that makes sense. They probably are, you know this this, you know it's full fidelity on YouTube. Well, mostly yeah. it's still being compressed, but it's 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 probably a lot better than go the you know Clubhouse is 
da- probably downscaling that audio. Yeah, but and and one last thing on Clubhouse. Um, so can, we can purchase your course on Teachable. Not yet. It's and and what I'm going to do because here's the thing. What's fun at the School of Podcasting is when the very first course I was in my office above a deli in Cleveland, and I'm about. 30 pounds lighter and my hair is still almost black, mm. you know, and then, and then you watch other, you just watch Dave age and get fat as you go through the school of podcasting. <laughs> and then I was thinking, well, if I record the videos now, I'm going to look like Jerry Garcia and I'm not going to look like Jerry Garcia forever. Right. Uh, and I was like, so, cause I actually thought about like, maybe I just need to re-record every single video. Cause even the planning your podcast one, there was one I was like, eh, I'd kind of change that a little, eh, just, just a little bit. So, and I thought what I could do is just re-record what I want to record. And some of this would be consolidated and build it in Teachable. And then when it's ready to go public, and that's the fun part is getting people off one platform into the other one because they have to sign up over there, which means they have to cancel over here. And some people, A, never open up your emails going, would you please cancel? Please cancel and move. And so it it just, I've done it a number of times. It's not fun, but uh Always fun. Yeah, I know. Yeah. There's Kajabi's like 120 bucks. I looked into them and I know people that love Kajabi and I've known people that have moved on Kajabi and like almost moved away. It's a little bit like Wix and Squarespace. It does everything, but there's always going to be that one thing that you wanted to do that it does. And then that's the same for really any platform. That's the advantage of WordPress. WordPress, you can kind of get it to do whatever you want, but that's the fun. Sort, but, sort of. Sort of. Yeah, exactly. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gary said Michael Stellner had a great, yeah. Michael's been like a clubhouse, uh, just, um, oh, what's the word he's out there. Just, you know, he's the, uh, clubhouse whisperer. Does, does Miss Eileen already have a 30 clubhouse courses that, Probably. She's, that she's put together? She's always super fast oh, on yeah. those platforms. And then just just she just she just grinds out the 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 tips the tricks yeah i'll have to look at patia uh john says it's uh that's another one that uh people talk some of these places they want to take a little too much money like to be on the platform i'm like no i will pay and then i will take all the money that people pay me to do that but uh (laughs) well they they have to support the platform well that's what the monthly fee is for it's like so (laughs) anyway but uh, yeah, if you are a, uh, actually, if I have, do I really have office hours today? That was on my schedule. I was like, is it really that, is it really February 6th already? And I guess it is. It is. Yeah, February, uh, we're all already day, yeah, in Office February. hours, 1 to 2.30. So expect an invite to that for the uh, awesome supporters. Uh, that's coming up at 1 o'clock. So I got to get off here and eat right. some lunch. All so, right, sounds good. Thanks to everybody. All and, right. Uh, we'll see you next got, week. Yeah, next week. I'll be a year older. I'll be 56. Oh, what's, what's the day? What's your, what's uh, the big day? Uh, the, uh, the eighth. The eighth. So okay. All right. We're, we're, we're combining Super Happy Bowl birthday. Sunday yeah. and <laughs> my birthday. Happy birthday to you, Dave. All right. We'll see you. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.